Hi, and welcome to Spooky Isles. My name's David Saunderson, and today we're talking Cornish ghosts with Matthew Banks. How are you, Matt? I'm good, thank you, David. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, Matt's a writer researcher based in Hale uh, in Cornwall. Now, he's uh, uh, lived there all your life? Um, I lived lived in Hale, then I lived in UK, and then I came back to Hale. Okay. Have you been to the Bucket of Blood? No, I haven't. Okay, I asked that. I knew I knew you hadn't been to the Bucket of Blood. Uh, the Bucket of Blood, uh, people will know, is a, a very famous pub in your area. How have you not ever been there? Um, it just well, I never. It never came cropped up that it might be haunted. The the story that I heard about it was that there was a well or something in or near the pub, and one day someone put or drew out the bucket, and instead of water, it was full of blood. So. So no one's actually said to me, or I've never found any evidence that there were ghosts there, because um, if there were, it would have definitely been written about by now. Yeah. But um, I've really focused on on places that people can go to that have got um, established hauntings, so okay. to speak. Okay. And so you you, you, grew, uh, you grew up in Newquay. Yeah. Now uh, I believe you you've probably been to Trice Manor then. Yes, I've been to Trice Manor many times. Lovely uh, 17th century building. Uh, it Like, in this dip. So, like, history and time doesn't seem to have touched it or whatever. Um, last time I was there, I was talking to one of the uh, National Trust workers about um, an article that I had had published about it. And they said, uh, oh, yeah, it's definitely haunted. I said, OK. They said, yeah, we were working late one night and they saw this bobbing head going across the car park with with nothing else. And I thought, oh, I wish I'd known that when I wrote my article. But, yeah, there's meant to be um, an evil bunny that lives there. An evil Sp bunny? And Yeah, just think of Monty Python. But apparently there was um, a, a, black, an, a black bunny, a spectral black bunny, that was was caged somehow and when they went to get the uh lord of the manor to do stuff um it had vanished it from a, this sealed unit and yeah there was uproar okay well what, can you tell us about trice manor what, what is it i mean i've not, never been there so I, d I don't really know can you give people an idea of what 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 the manor looks like and what it, what it's about um it is a 17th century manor house um do you want to see a picture uh, we'll put a picture. Yeah, put show us a picture, and we'll put a picture up on the screen when the uh, when we finish this. Yep. Yeah. Oh dear! Throwing everything around. Right, can you see that? Yep. Yep. No, That's definitely. Trice Manor. Yep. We'll put a picture up. Yep, so people can see it. Uh, yeah. Um, and what you can't see in that picture is because that's the um, the front. There are two stone lions on the pathway leading up into Trice Manor, and they come from Kinegi Manor. Okay. Because um, the Arundels, I think it is, um, had connections with both houses. And when one went to Trice, they took the um, lions with them. And Kinegi's um, Manor is a, a place that we often see in, uh, you know, when we're talking about ghosts. Yeah, um, it is or was owned by John Fowler as it became a little holiday village. Um, but the manor house itself is uh, apartments now um and there's a little story about that um my wife worked there and they f um found um the arundel coat of arms the original arundel coat of arms and i i tried negotiating with with um the business to to take this coat of arms because it was broken to get, uh, have it renovated and fixed uh, so it would be kept for posterity but they had a um a young cleaner there who was a little bit um, overzealous, shall we say. Mm. And um, he was told to clean out the room where this was whilst I was negotiating and he smashed it up. Oh, okay. So, but apparently there is a, the same as um, Trice Manor, apparently there's a haunted carriage that will go down the main road up, up and stop outside um, the front of the building or what have you. Um, people have heard voices um, in the bar area when it's late at night um, where the fireplace was. Um, it, 
it's got a cold patch. Um, just the the standard sort of thing, really. Well, it's not the standard. It's the classic. I would say it was the, the classic. classic. The classic. What what is it about Cornwall? Like I, I I traveled there a couple of Christmases ago over over the you know Christmas New Year's period and went to a lot of haunted places. Uh, you know basically haunted pubs because that's the kind of place you go to on your on your holiday what is it about cornwall with all the smugglers and the sort of the the ghost tales and everything like that it's, it's a fantastic it's sort of a ghost hunter's paradise i would have thought um i think it's, it's because we are seen to be behind the times even uh uh bottrell and hunt in in their books have said that we are uh, are like encapsulated in time and the outside world doesn't seem to um intrude on us um and uh with like the the smugglers and stuff they used to invent ghost stories to cover up their crimes uh, of what they were doing um but then you get the, the nitty-gritty where you get other things like charlotte diamond who who was uh, murdered on bob Moore. And there is nothing mentioned about a ghost up until um, 1932. So when, but, did Charlotte, when, did, when was Charlotte Diamond and when was she murdered? Uh, well, she was allegedly murdered on April the 14th, 1844. But okay. her body was found on the 21st of April in perfect condition with no decomposition or anything like that. But her boyfriend, who she went out for a walk with, was accused of her crime and he was hanged for it. And um, he was buried in Bodmin Jail, uh, where the coal shuttles are. Okay, yep. So um, whether he's still there or not, I don't know. I know that where they originally buried the bodies, that was all covered in lime, but where he was put from what I can ascertain, wasn't. So he could still be there. Um, and then um, the legend of uh, Charlotte Diamond really came about in in the late 1930s and um, onwards. And then obviously uh, Pat Mum with, with her book on um, Charlotte Diamond um, really brought the case to the forefront. And that's when people started looking at the case as a whole because you've got two people that go out together one comes back one doesn't and then well you must have done it because nobody else knows what happened yeah and so he's meant to haunt bobman jail and she's meant to wander the, the moors looking for him because he was innocent any part of the moor because when you say bobman moor it's a big place isn't it um where brown willie is if you look down there is a there's a monument to charlotte diamond um which says that she was um killed there um, so it's it's it's, 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 it's a pointing finger basically to the sky saying that matthew weeks killed her on this date um but what a lot of people thought happened was that the monument up that the monument went up before his trial but it didn't it went up the following July, um, after he was hanged, he had a very uh, quick trial. He he was um, went to trial and then he was hanged on the tenth of August. Um, so it was all very quick. I mean, it was an um, eight-hour trial with no breaks. So, and so, yeah. so, what do you th so what do you think happened then? Um, I have suspicions. Um, he he. Had, he had a, a love rival for uh, Charlotte's affections, allegedly, and this person didn't partake in the, the hunt for her when they established that she was missing and, and basically vanished, um, only to re-emerge at the trial, saying that he was due to meet her and he was never cross-examined or anything. It's the sort of thing you would not expect in this day and age. And... He did say that if Char if he went to uh, Penhale Farm, he would take Charlotte away from from Matthew Weeks, and that's what I think he did. Yeah. So what, why did the boyfriend not say something? Did he not point the figure at this other bloke? Uh, Matthew Weeks was illiterate. He was a simpleton and disabled. Okay. Um, 
by all accounts. And I don't think he had a leg to stand on. I mean, he had literally everybody he worked with turn against him. Yeah. Uh, there were 21 witnesses for the prosecution and absolutely none for the defence. And I think on on some base level, he gave up. Yeah. And that which... sounds really silly, but... Well, no, I mean, he's just stitched up and he was, uh, you know, back in those days, you've got no legal aid or anything like that. No. So you, you're basically stuffed. So yeah. that's that's led to two ghost stories. You say him and the in the jail and yeah. then Charlotte Diamond wandering the moor. Now, that's a very sort of a, wandering, a ghost wandering the moor. That this is his classic stuff, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's very Wuthering Heights stuff as well. It, it, it is. Know. Yeah, I'd imagine she's in some flowing long white frock or something like that <laughs> looking for her lover or something like that so uh, apparently she's wearing a a red um diamond um cloak thing and a gold dress apparently she, she was obviously very rich then if she had a gold dress i mean this is <laughs> oh, well there you go so oh, have you got any other favourite uh, ghost stories from Cornwall? Because I mean, it's it's hard to say Cornish ghost stories because it, it's just so diverse, isn't it? Yeah. From one part one part of the county to the other is a million miles away. Um, I, I like um, there's a story about Kinegi Ken- Manor, where um, the the Lord of the Manor ha- ha- had this wife and she wasn't very happy, and he had her locked up in. Um, the summer house and uh, she faded away and I, if memory says well she committed suicide or something like that but when she died um, she turned into a ghostly bunny okay. I know this is uh, these bunnies keep cropping up I know they're it's like a Cornish ghost, thing I'm sh- ghost rabbits is it obviously yeah and one day when he was out riding his horse um, this ghostly bunny a- appeared and startled the horse and threw him off his horse and killed him. Yeah. And then he was put, or his body was put in the summer house. Um, and then uh, there's a raucous wake or something. And at the end of this wake, he, he burst out of the summer house or his spirit burst out of the summer house and frightened everybody. So I quite like that one. Yeah. Um, so when did when did you first sort of start you know researching because obviously you're speaking to a lot of people about these kind of tales when did when did you start getting out there to find the find the stories um th- this is really an offshot more than anything else is um kenneth williams the actor yeah started his theatrical life professionally in newquay okay i did not and, know that. Yep. and i wrote a very in-depth article about his time in Newquay and that led to other other ghostly things was all the ghostly things cropping up dur- during that research um, there's, there's one little story I, I, I want to tell you is um, it's from 1822 and uh, not all ghosts are real but um, where they had the barracks in Truro, um, this family was haunted by smashing cups, stones thrown against the window. I mean, they were really um, terrorised by what they thought was a ghost. And it ended up, when they found out and looked deeper into it, I mean, the whole of Truro was up. You, you had, pit, you know, the old horror films you've seen with pitchforks and, yeah, yeah, the, and stuff like yeah. that. Um, it was like that and it ended up being um one of the officer's sons because his wife had beaten him that badly that this was his way of getting revenge o- on her so you so um it is an article that i'll be sending to you yeah um it's and it was called a rain of stones because that's what was happening there was this rain yeah Oh, well, there's clearly lots of very strange things that have uh, that happened in Cornwall. How are you keeping yourself busy during the uh, the lockdown? Uh, you obviously like getting out there, talking to people. Have you? I've got a question. I was going to ask you. Have you ever actually seen a ghost? Um, that's a very interesting. Question. Apparently, I have. 
No, okay. the reason I say that is, is um, my parents, when we moved to Hale, they bought the old police station. Um, and apparently I used to get hysterical before I went to, be be went to bed. And they got it out of me that apparently when I went to bed, uh, there, was a, there was an old man that used to sit on the end of my bed. Um, and he used to petrify me. And the interesting thing was, my, my, my aunt never liked that house. Yeah. So it was either an old policeman or a, a convict that petrified me as a child. But I don't remember it myself. But my parents regaled me with this story of, of, of being petrified. Oh, well, that's an interesting story. It wasn't like you had an imaginary friend. You didn't, it, it wasn't, it might have been imaginary, but you certainly wasn't a, a friend. No. 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 So, so, but you've not seen anything since then. This was just a, in the haunted police station at Hale. Yeah. Um, like, wherever I go to do my research, uh, I always take loads and loads of photos, and I've never once found anything. I hope to find something in all the photos I take. My wife gets quite irate with me because I take, like, hundreds of photos every time, and I go through them, and I think, there's going to be something there. There's going to be something there. Where are you? Nothing. Nothing. Well, well, maybe one day. So, what what are you doing to keep yourself busy during the during the um, lockdown? Um, I'm I'm working from home. Yeah. Um, and I'm writing. Um, I'm doing some film stuff at the moment, and then I should be going over some of my articles because I found some other stuff out that I'll be adding to, okay. and what have you, and and keep them busy that way. Well, that, that's great. I mean, we'll, hopefully we'll get some of the benefit of that for the Spooky Owls with some of the, the research. We'd love to hear some more stories at some stage about uh, other parts of Cornwall that you've been to and uh, and what's there. Maybe some more uh, maybe some more spirit ba uh, rabbits. Yes, more bunnies. <laughs> there must, there must be more bunnies. No, but it's really funny that two houses that are connected both have supernatural bunnies, so to speak. Oh, um, that seems like a research uh, project just waiting to be uh, <laughs> waiting to be done. Anyway, thanks for that, Matt. We look forward to uh, talking to you again, but you take care of yourself, okay? Okay, and you too, David. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.